Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at a video of a sovereign citizen Moore getting pulled over and getting his window broken. It's actually the individual Jamal from the YouTube channel Rise of the Moors. Now it's an old video from 2019, but it's still interesting, it's still entertaining, and I'm going to use it as an opportunity um, at the end of my commentary, which follows the video, to go into two uh, common sovereign citizen theories. One why they say the United States is a corporation, and number two, why sovereign citizens believe that the sheriff is the ultimate authority. Thank you everybody for joining. This is the Common Sense Academy. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'm looking to get to 10,000 subscriptions. Most of my viewers are not subscribed. I can't say that word today. So please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's a free way to support this channel, which will always remain free. I also encourage you to sign up for my email list. You'll get a free PDF on the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement written by me. Now, before we watch this video, some of you just came here to do the same time sip. I'm drinking Diet Coke. You may be drinking coffee, which is my other favorite beverage. Maybe a beer, maybe a glass of wine. Regardless, raise it in the air. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Okay, let's watch this video. Can I ask you why you pulled me over? Because you passed me in the right lane and you're going over 80 miles an hour. Okay. So you were in the right lane? I'm sorry, what? You were in, are you uh, impaired of hearing? It's very hard to hear you on the side of the highway with cars okay. driving by. Okay. It's very hard. Did I break any laws? Did I break any laws? Correct. I did? You passed on the right and you're driving over 80 miles an hour. Oh. So am I, have I, am I suspected of committing a crime? Excuse me. Am I suspected of committing a crime? Am I suspected of committing a crime? I did not say that. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Okay. Of the highway. Okay. So I violated the highway? In Connecticut, you have to have a registration and insurance. So you're saying I violated the highway? Correct. Okay. How you doing, sir? How you doing? If you wouldn't mind, uh, can you scroll this down so like, we can talk? I want you to be able to hear me. Oh, I can hear you. You can videotape me all you want. I know. That's fine. I know. I, I can hear you. That. So listen, you will yes. stop for a violation okay. and ask for some documentation, okay? You and I, I showed, I, pro I provided my ID. I told her who I was and I showed her who okay. I was. Uh, as far as the vehicle goes, do you have mm -hmm. any registration documentation? No, I don't. Okay. So would you mind, it's very difficult. No, I can hear you and you can hear me. This is fine. So why is your vehicle not registered? Uh, because I'm not required by law I to have it registered. I'm it. not required by law to have it registered. Okay. You know what, sir? I'm not going to debate any of this with you. I, I understand okay, you I have your feelings on something. Well, it's not my feelings. the okay. state feels otherwise. Well, okay? this, the state is a corporation and it can't have feelings. So, did you get a license from him or nothing? All right. I don't I have a license. Can I see it, please? I don't have a license. Oh, you so, don't have a license? No, I don't. All right. Do you have any identification? Yes, I do. I, I identified myself to her already. Here it is. There's my ID right here. Can I see it, please? Yeah. yeah. And listen, we're not trying to give you a hard time. I'm not I'm giving you. I'm not giving you a hard time on. either. Can I just see? Here's my ID. Hold on. Here's my identification. Here it is. Yeah. My name is Jamal, right there. I can't, sir, I don't have good eyes. Can I just? Uh, see that's not my eyes? problem. Here's my name. What's that? Here's my name. My name's right there. My name can is I Jamal. See it, you can see it. Your light is I on. I can't it. see it. Sir. Yes, you can. Sir, here's the situation. Here, look. Here's a picture of me. Here's okay. me. Sorry. I'm telling you, my name is Jamal. Okay, my name sorry. is right there. Listen this is me. Listen to me. I am listening. Continue to be very difficult if that's what you should. I'm not being difficult. All right. All we're asking you for is to show us so we can see the ID. I did. So we can write it down. So we can I can write it down for you. Write it down for me. That'd okay. Do you have a pen? No, I don't. I don't either. There's nothing in here. True. If you want to come over here, he'll give you his uh, identification verbally. I don't have a pen. Can you show us that ID again? Yeah. So we... You've never had any identification from any state? Here's my identification. Right. Here's my what state. What state is it from? Here's my state. What's that? Are you ready, ma'am? What state is it from? It's not from a state. It's from my state. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, let's spell your last name first. Nice and loud for us. I don't have a last name. Are you ready for my name? J A M as in Mike. H as in Hotel. A as in Alpha. L as in Lima. Space. T as in Tango. A as in Alpha. L as in Lima. 
I as in India, B as in Bravo, space, A as in Alpha, B as in Bravo, D as in Delta, U as in Uniform, L as in Lima, L as in Lima, A as in Alpha, H as a hotel. So let me explain how this works, sir. If your vehicle is not registered, okay. it doesn't travel on the, on the highway. No, no, I can travel on the highway. Well, here's the situation, okay? Very okay. simple. We're telling you that you can't. I know you. I know what you're telling me. That, I'm, not I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting at all. So what we're telling you right now, we've asked you to see your ID. You've refused to hand it over. No, I didn't. I'd like to hold it, please. You don't need to hold That's it. That's standard practice. I do need to hold no, it. No, you don't. And I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. If you continue to resist with us, sir, I'm not resisting anything. You are. I need I'm to not. see your license so I can hold on to it. So I can it's see not a license. I need any form of ID to I prove just, who you are. I just proved to you who I was. You didn't, sir. I, okay. This Did is you not, great. You can, can I ask you a question? I'm not being difficult. I'm not being difficult. Can I ask you a question? You're going to try to be everything we do. We're going to try to deflect. And okay. I get that. That's fine. I'm not deflecting anything. Here, your vehicle's not registered. Okay. It's, it's not, not going to travel on the highway. I can travel okay. on the highway. You can't. I okay. can. That's fine. Well, okay. that's for you to go to the court and decide with, okay? That's why I asked for the sheriff. Can you call the sheriff, please? We don't have a sheriff. Sir. Okay. I just went. We don't I just give me the keys to your vehicle. Can someone call the sheriff, please? There is no sheriff. I'm there, exit there 90 in Connecticut, and they're lying to me saying that there is no sheriff, when clearly um, the sheriff in American law is charged with keeping the peace, and I haven't committed any crimes. Jamal, how old are you? Jamal, is that relative to any of this? Yes, it is relative. Sir. How so? Because at this point here, you have an unregistered motor vehicle. Okay. We don't know if you have a license. You said you don't. I don't. Correct? I'm telling you, I don't. Okay. So Jamal, here's the situation. You can, this is this is all well and good. You can continue this on after. Continue what? You have an unregistered motor vehicle. I can continue you, what? You can continue all this being all difficult of, all with of us what? as much as you'd like to. Okay. Okay. And I get it, and that's fine, sir. It's not the first time we've come across where someone wants to be difficult and refuses. I'm not to being difficult issue. at you all. You are being difficult. I'm, I'm really not. What's your date of birth? You don't need to know that. That's personal Wait, information. That's birth. personal information. It's, it's sir, it's required. Is it not personal account. information? It's no, it's not. When's your date of birth? It's, I don't have to give that to you. Oh. Okay. Aren't you a public servant? No, I'm not. Oh, so, no, sir, oh, so you're a private person. Sir, here's the situation. Oh, so you don't, you so you're not government. Be okay. difficult with us, that's fine. So he just you told me he's not, much he's not a, um, fine, sir. All we're asking you for is cooperation. I am cooperating. Yourself. I did. See who you are. You can see, you can you not see me? Okay. Okay. Now they're blocking me in I'm right there. And then there's another one or two behind me. Yes? Jamal, can you step outside of the vehicle? Oh, uh, may I ask why? Because um, I'm asking you to. I'm sorry? You said I haven't committed a crime, right? You have now. What's you the crime? Now, Jamal, please please unlock the door. May I ask you what the crime is? I'll tell you all inside. Right now, you're being placed under arrest. Don't up your vehicle. For what? Aren't you supposed to tell me what I did? Yes, you're placed under arrest for interfering. Interfering with who? In our investigation. State what police. investigation? We've told you enough, Jamal. Okay. No, you haven't. Jamal. Enough. You said, I'll okay, vehicle, can I ask you something? Like a peaceful I am, look, I'm peace, I'm being peaceful. Unlock your vehicle, for what? Step out and talk to the trooper. I'm talking You're to you. I'm arrest. talking to all of you. I'm You're under arrest for arrest, what? Jamal, for for what? Interfering with who? Our investigation. What Jamal, investigation? That's enough. You don't unlock unlock the door the vehicle, Jamal. What investigation? You're breaking the window. Jamal. This is my property. Jamal, unlock the vehicle. We don't want to break any windows. So why are you threatening me? Could you please comply with us? I am complying. I'm asking you, what am I being arrested for? Enough. We've told what, you. Interfering. What, interfering with who? Our investigation. What investigation? Police. What investigation? This investigation. What? What is this investigation? I know who you are. I told you. My name is Jamal. Jamal. I told you who I am. Okay. Open the door, sir. No, thank you. Out. I told you who I was. Open the door and step out. I, I told you who I am. Door, I told you who I am. Open the door, sir. I'm telling everyone who I am. I'm Jamal. Sir. What investigation? Open the door and please step out. What investigation am I suspected to be involved in? Resolution. This is a peaceful resolution. I'm, like a peaceful I'm, I'm by myself right now, and there's like a lot of you. Because you're not opening the door, okay? Step out. No, the first of all, it was just her who pulled me over, okay. and there was no investigation. Out, now all of a sudden, the there's an investigation. Out, no, open thank you. Well, you're gonna have to violate me and, and break my personal property. We don't want to, sir. Yeah, no, yes, you do. No, we do not. You're refusing to comply. I'm not refusing anything. So I, I will sit here unarmed, my hands, yeah. here's my yeah. one hand, here's my other hand on the phone, and, and I will sit here peacefully, and you will destroy my property. We're not going to destroy your property. Okay. I don't understand why you have it that you continually 
Why can't you just cooperate? Can you give me a copy of the Constitution, please? Can you please just cooperate, sir? I don't carry a copy. Okay. Of okay listen, well, when I served in the United States Marine Corps, I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution sir, for the United States. So me, please, sir. show me the Constitution. Listen to me, sir. I'm listening. Comply with us. There's I'm no complying. To go, this way. go what way? The, well, you're going to be difficult for hours. I'm not that. being difficult for you hours. Already, this I could have already been on my way because I haven't violated anyone. Sir, open up the door, please. No, Step thank up. you. Come talk to us. I'm talking to you right now. Open up the door, sir. I'm going to take a drink of my water. Open up the door, sir. No, thank you. you I'm talking. You can hear me. You can, all can hear me. Open the door. Sir. I guess this is how they treat veterans, right? You know, I guess this is how you treat police officers. You disrespect. I'm not disrespecting you at all. Have I asked you to do something? What did you ask me to do? Open the door. Open my... So you're you telling me what to do with my property? Don't talk to us. Okay. <laughs> you're telling me what to do with my property? Yes. Do I go to your house and tell you what to do? No. You're not a police officer. Okay. okay. Step out of the vehicle, sir. Listen, and, you haven't, and you haven't served in the United States Marine Corps. Okay. You're passively resisting on purpose. To create I'm not resisting. No, I'm not. I'm not creating anything. You said I violated someone or I'm in an investigation. I'm asking what investigation and you're not telling me what. So I'm obviously not involved in it. Open the vehicle. A traffic stop is not an investigation. Open the vehicle, sir. No, thank you. Open the vehicle, sir. No, thank you. Here's my other hand. Still up. Nope. Okay, sir. I open the window. My window is open. My seatbelt's still on. My seatbelt's still on. My seatbelt's still Okay, so the beginning of this video uh, talks about Jamal from Rise of the Moors getting the police called on him for apparently having a gun uh, around his neck and also a gun on his holster. But I don't really understand how it's all connected because then we are taken to the scene where he is pulled over in his vehicle. Um, so I don't know if the police were called for that and then they came and they found him driving. Uh, the police officer claims that he was speeding and that's why she pulled over. They said he passed in the right lane and he was doing 80 miles per hour. I wonder if she actually clocked him. Okay, and then they pull him over and they start to question him. Um, couple of interesting things that came up here is he keeps asking him, am I suspected of committing a crime? Am I suspected of committing a crime? You know, in the sovereign citizen world with the right to travel, they don't believe that it's a crime to drive on the road without your registration, without a driver's license. I don't even know if they believe speeding is a crime. All three of those are crimes. They're minor traffic violations. In many states, those are still held under the crime or the penal code. So technically it is a crime, even though it's extremely minor. So it turns out he doesn't have his registration. He was going over 80 miles per hour. They ask him to show ID and show his registration. He says, well, that's not required by the law. And he said, and I think the officer said he's required under state law. And he says, well, this state is a corporation. We're going to get into that a little bit deeper in a minute. Um, he then says that he doesn't have a license, but he has ID. And you can see him sort of holding the ID over here. Him and the officer go back and forth because the officer wants to see it up close. He can't read it from that far away. Even if you have good vision, that's difficult to do. Uh, this sovereign citizen refuses to give the ID to the officer. I could tell from seeing, because I've seen some of these Moorish IDs on the internet, it looks like one of the little red Moorish IDs. So it's not an actual ID. It's a you know, it's, it's, it's a, a membership in a club. Um, it, you know, he tries to trip the officer up a couple of times. He says, are you a public servant? And the officer says, no. He says, oh, you're a private servant. You know, that's some sovereign citizen stuff. They try to say that, oh, cops are, you know, cops have to be bonded and that they're private servants, okay, which means they're working for a corporation and they're not actually serving the public, et cetera, et cetera. But if the officer answers that he is a public servant, then what the sovereign citizens do is they say, oh, well, you're working for me. I'm your boss. And they start giving the officers orders. So, you know, there's way for, for them to play either way, depending on how the answer comes back. And uh, 
he says, you know, this is from, oh, he asks if the idea is from his, from the state. And he says, well, it's not from a state, it's from my state. Yeah, the state of the Moors. That's likely what he's arguing. It's from the state of the Moors because he believes that the United States is actually Moorish territory from literally ancient times. Then he tells the, uh, the officer to call the sheriff. So why do sovereign citizens have this strange obsession with the sheriff? We're going to look at that in just a second. Um, then the officers decide that they're going to charge him with interfering with the investigation, which is a legitimate charge in majority of states. And he says, now you are being charged with a crime. And Jamal just, you know, stands there like this. And the, the female officer pulls his arm and then they break the window and they drag him out of the car forcefully. Again, I think that this is almost a rite of passage for sovereign citizens like you don't you're not legit it's like if you know you got to do something to get initiated into a gang or if you haven't been shot you don't have street cred etc etc well now he's got sovereign citizen cred he's had his window smashed um but what let's take a look first what does he mean uh what do they mean when they say that the state is a corporation so I took this off a very good website, which goes into pseudo law. I'll leave the link below. Unfortunately, I don't think this website is still active, but they have a lot of good stuff on sovereign citizens. So we're going to look into why do sovereign citizens refer to uh, states and the United States as a corporation. Here's what I'll tell you. I haven't found anything good to explain how they get into the states themselves, right? The 50 states but they argue that the United States is a corporation. I guess by virtue of the country being a corporation, the states are themselves. So we'll go through this. It says, what is the United States? We'll run through this article here. Um, the United States is a sovereign state with the constitution as the foundational document and supreme law of the land. The United States entity, the same you see as a party in court cases, was created implicitly by the constitution. The United States is the highest entity that exists or can exist in the United States. The United States itself is not a standard corporation incorporated under any nation's laws or its own. However, the United States may form and make use of various standard corporations internally. Now that we're done with the formalities, let's look at some pseudo law claims. This here is 28 USC 2002. The following definition is often claimed to be proof positive that the United States is a corporation. Section 15, United States means a federal corporation, B, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States, or C, an instrumentality of the United States. First, we need to understand the basics of statutory word definition. If you read the top of the section carefully, you will see the words as used in this chapter. That means those definitions only apply within that chapter of the United States Code. And I cover this in my book. At a glance, it covers about 124 sections out of many thousand in the USC. Moreover, the definitions only apply in federal proceedings that fall under that chapter. The same definition does not apply and is not used anywhere else. So, yes, for the purpose of that chapter, United States is defined as a federal corporation. This argument is based on the scope of the definition alone. Clearly, something that applies in just one chapter of the federal code can't override the entire nation. We can look further, though, to find the exact intent and reasoning behind the, de the particular definition. From the description of the chapter, we see it's related to the federal debt collection procedure. How, how quickly can we find out? Well, this guy did a Google Scholar search and he found out. In passing the FDCPA, Congress evinced a clear intent to exclude private transactions, debts created under and thus governed by state law, into which the United States was not an original party. That explains that. So what, does, what is, that is saying essentially is that there are certain codes that, that will, certain sections of the law that will define the United States or an automobile or a person, or a corporation, or various other things that are dealt with in the law under specific terms, but that's only to narrow the scope of the actual law that's being applied. It doesn't transform these things into corporations, 
okay? And you heard him say it only, it only applies to a narrow section of the code. It has to do with statutory interpretation. There's no legal effect of turning the United States into a corporation. Excuse me, here's another legal theory, weird theory, pseudo theory by the sovereigns. Some believe the creation of a municipal or state style, style government subject to Congress in the District of Columbia somehow changed the government and made everything, including the Constitution, subject to that corporation. That would be quite impossible and it makes no sense. The created cannot supersede its creator. No legislation from Congress nor ruling from the Supreme Court nor executive order can destroy or replace the Constitution of the United States. So I hope that clears up some of the confusion when it comes to the sovereign citizens calling the United States a corporation. They may rely on that definition in the United States Code that I just went into. They may also argue that the creation of the District of Columbia as a special district or territory somehow transformed the United States into a corporation. Some also argue that when the United States left the gold standard, the United States as we know it was dissolved, but a United States corporation therefore re place the actual country and that it's run by a shady cabal of bankers okay it all relies on a whole bunch of assumptions that are not grounded in history law or reality okay let's take a look now at why sovereign citizens and why jamal wanted them to call the sheriff who he said it's jo whose job it is to keep the peace if you read my book, which will be coming out in the next couple of months, or if you just do some internet searches, you will see that the sovereign citizen movement had its beginnings in the posse comitatus movement, which started in, let's say, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, okay? And sovereigns didn't really pop up until the 80s and 90s. So core to their ideals, we'll start here with the first sentence. Core to the ideals of posse comitatus was that the county and the county sheriff were the only true and legitimate his governmental authorities in the United States. This is in line with the name and historical roots of the concept, although it is also distorted, as ancient posse comitatus never denied the legitimacy of a higher government. And just for some clarification, ancient posse comitatus um, was a concept under Roman law, which said that the county essentially was the uh, sort of the largest body of government, or I don't know about the largest body, but the county above the rest. So the Roman Empire uh, actually started counties. And then you see later on in the British, in, in I'm sorry, the English Civil War, okay, the idea of posse comitatus existed where uh, the two sides that were fighting, the royalists and the anti-royalists or the parliamentarians, would go into towns and would round up local townspeople to join the army. That power was called posse comitatus, and it was passed on to actual sheriffs in England who were able to call up a posse in order to enforce the law. Posse comitati, or, you know, those who... who uh, follow that principle, believe there had been a, subver a subversion of the original constitution and only through the actions of the people, the posse, and the county sheriff could rightful government be restored. Adherents believe it was the sheriff's role to fight the scourge of state and federal government. And if the sheriff did not fulfill this role, he may be rightfully subjected to hanging by the posse. As such, Two of the most basic symbols for posse comitatus were the sheriff's badge and a hangman's noose. So this principle of posse comitatus in that the sheriff in the county was the highest form of self-government came to the sovereign citizens from the earlier posse comitatus movement. And that movement saw the sheriff as the largest and the most legitimate uh, authority within the country and that the sheriff would override uh, state and local police and also the federal government and any authority that the federal government would have. That's why you see sovereign citizens say, call the sheriff. Can I talk to the sheriff? Da, da, da. They think the sheriff's going to help them. Really, the sheriff's just going to come down and help the police arrest them. 
So I hope we learned something today. Uh, we got to see, you know, uh, some windows getting smashed from a notorious sovereign citizen. We learned one of the base uh, theories that the sovereigns have for arguing the United States and states are a corporation. And we also got to the root of why sovereigns believe that the sheriff is the highest authority in the land. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so please subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for joining me. Joe Palmetto out.